I just finished the method section of my thesis, um, which was really boring, but it wasn't that hard because along the way in my PhD, I make these like figures that um, in a way that is really useful. So you have all the information that you need and you can like crop them in different ways and that sort of thing. And when you do this along the way, like every time you have an experiment, then you have all the information there you can go back to and cross-reference and you can crop it in different ways for like presentations or uh, paper figures or that sort of thing. So I've talked a little bit about this before, but I thought I'd show you a uh, more example. This is like some fake bob bind sticker binding experiment. So I can't show me my actual stuff. Um, but an example of how I do this. So I do this in Adobe Illustrator, um, but a free alternative is Inkscape. Uh, what these have in common is that they are scalable vector graphic programs. Um, so basically you can blow things up really big um, and you can like export them as big as you need. Um, so typically I export them as like PDFs, um, which can blow up to any size or whatever, but they're kind of big. So you can also export them as different file sizes depending on your needs. But if you think you're going to use it in like a presentation or something, the PDF is um, a good way to go. Okay, let's take a look. The Illustrator, a free alternative is Inkscape. Um, but I'm going to show you in Illustrator. Um, and so basically the idea with Illustrator is these artboards. And if you, um, I have a post on like that sort of thing if you are interested in learning how to use it. Um, but today I want to tell you about this, like one of the key things I use it for. So for like each of my experiments, I'll do something like this. Um, so I have the, cr a crucial thing is the date. Um, so this lets you like cross reference back to um, your notes where you have all the details about it. Um, and then what you can do is you have like your main, you, I put like some, so, so the SB500 or whatever, I number my slot blots that I do with these binding assays. Um, so these experiments where I test binding of things. So here I'm changing the concentration of stickers and testing um, the ability of various bobs to bind to the stickers. Um, and so here, this is like the binding curves, and then here's the calculated KDs from those curves. So if you care about KDs, that's like a measure of binding affinity. The stronger um, the binding, the lower the KD. So we can see that Bob binds best. Um, Bob B binds best, sorry. And then here are those values. And so if you think about it, like you would want to show these things at different times. So when you're in a presentation or something, often you just want like this bar graph. Um, or these two, but you don't really usually like in a presentation or whatever you want to want to put like a table on the top on the slide probably um, so basically you can if you set this up you can crop it in different ways so that you can export this as like a PDF and then crop it however you need it um, so right now if you have a few options if you want to export things um, so you can export as artboards um, so if I wanted to export this as an artboard though I would want to resize the artboard so I can do that just by like manually resizing it. So this tool over here is the artboard. Or I could do, um, can go to object, artboard, um, fit to selected art. And I can do that and then I can align it to stuff if I want. But another option is if you don't want to use the artboard, you can then do this acid export, this sign over here. If I drag it over here, um, sorry. If it's a, you want to like group it and then drag it, um, and then I can name this like zero, and I would name it usually something with a date. So I do like SB 500 to 504, and then 090821, or I do like or, or not, yeah something like that. Or maybe I'll do like put Bob binding. Um, depends whatever is the best way for you to cross-reference it. The really key thing is that it has the date because then your notes should have all the details. Um, but this way, so what I do is I actually, so then you can export it like this. You can choose a different format to export it. Um, but what I do is when I do this and I put, I export this and then I put it into like a results page in my um, electronic notebook. So I use OneNote. Um, I can't show you that, but I have a, like a, like I keep a page for each day and then I also have a results tab where I put all the nicely 
formatted results um, so I can find them with quick and easy reference and then I can reference back to the actual notes page for that specific day. Um, and then I also keep, like, I keep all of the Illustrator versions in, like, uh, uh, figures, Adobe Illustrator things, so that I have all of these. And then I can, um, like, all my figures from different days, and I can um, then, like, combine figures from different things and um, modify the text and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, so it's really important that you have, like, all this experimental details when it comes to writing method sections. Um, and so I'm really glad I did that. Unfortunately, I didn't start doing this until like partway through my PhD, so the beginning experiments I had to track down a little bit of stuff. But when you do it like this, it's um, really easy. Um, yeah, so basically that's it. And so now I'm gonna go back to working on my thesis um, and it's coming along really nicely. Um, oh yeah, so also I just, I put like some sort of title. Usually this title is just for me. Sometimes the title is something that like I might leave on the figure. Um, so I tend to like try to tart center it over which part of the figure I might think I think I might present if I want the title there but a lot of the time it's just like something for me to um like be able to quickly look at it and see what like what that figure tells me without having to actually like read the figure um yeah and so yeah it's really great to have things like this too because then you can like if you want a multi-panel figure or whatever you have everything in like this mode where you can then move things to different places um, and you can even save all these individual graphs as in their individual assets if you want to do things that way as well okay well hope that helps